I feel partly responsible. Hey, Jimmy's story, come to Georgia. Me. It wouldn't have happened. I knew it was a match made in heaven. Brother, I can't wait to see the too. He was long before there was reality television. You have admitted it? Jimmy's story, which is considered an underground cult classic. It won four awards at the Dahlonega International Film Festival. Guest discovered by legendary film rep John Pearson, who discovered Spike Lee, Michael Moore, and Richard Link Ladder, and he does a feature on making of Billy's film Jimmy's Story on Bravo Television. This is home to an aspiring filmmaker musician named Billy Yeager. Billy! I want an independent filmmaker. Yeager's film won several awards and was regarded as being a monumental and outstanding achievement by the press. What is your name, please? My name is Ray Yeager. My name is Ray Yeager. When I was young, I was so proud, I'm so sure of myself, I'm so much self-confidence. By our singing police officer, Ray Yeager. There he is. Our studio, we would like you to welcome uh, Billy Yeager. Billy, nice to have you with us tonight. Nice to be here. Thank you for coming. Billy, I said that you're a young man that's truly in charge of your own destiny. You got a guitar? What kind you got? Lots of ego, self-confidence. Just a country boy. I think it's about timing. I think it's about when your time comes, if it ever comes. But you know, when you're you know, older and you lose so much, your voice, your money, your family, everything, you gain humility very quickly. I can't help it if I'm still in love with you. If you own one of these, you own a piece of history. The Highwayman. What a great story. Live, this is your Fox 29 Morning News. And if you have an original, it may now be worth some major money. Well, the Highwaymen is a documentary about 23 African-American artists who sold their art throughout the state of Florida. And here to talk more about that is documentary filmmaker Billy Yeager from Miami, who did a story called The Highwaymen. What a great story. What inspired you, first of all? I grew up in Miami and uh, went surfing for like 30 years up in Sebastian Fort Pierce, and I heard about the artists, saw them on the side of the roads painting, and uh, when I heard about it, they were given the term The Highwaymen in 95 and I decided to shoot a documentary film about them. Now, these highwaymen actually sold their arts dating back to the 1960s. Right. What makes their art so special? Well, they painted Florida as it was and how Florida looked back before all the <laughs> developing took place. The artists known as the Florida Highwaymen have gained international attention and notoriety. There are over four documentary films produced about the artists, over six books published, and a soon-to-be Hollywood movie is being made about the Florida Highwaymen. Jaeger is the only one who ever painted right alongside them filming the experience for over a year. Jaeger also produced a very rare documentary film about the artist, featuring footage of some of the original artists who have since passed away. This is some of the rarest footage that exists. Jaeger and Livingston Roberts also painted together. Something that has never been allowed, Jaeger was one of the only people who was allowed to penetrate into the artist's lives. Just get together and paint together. It was some years back. Start of the back uh, of it. He started out on campus. Have you told anybody this before? Uh, well, no. Uh. See what I'm doing in detail. I'm sitting in the chair so I can move around. I remember 
he came Freddy. in. We only, we only have a short time to paint him, see? <laughs> you look like dogs. Yeah, you, stayed up up. you said that if I go down this one. Got a bar, and then you go through another section of it, and that's where he painted it. On this one, here. Here. Right. Here. Right. Here. 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 Nobody has ever yeah. said that. Nobody will ever know. If you've seen cameras and lights around the town of Lake Worth, you just might have been seeing South Florida's very own filmmaker, Billy Yeager. Billy Yeager started the script for A Perfect Song this summer. After winning several awards at film festivals last year for his documentary, Jimmy's Story. Quiet on the set! Action! I decided to make a film about the power of music and how it could transform humanity. Song. I, it, it just it was that. It, it was a perfect sum of, of, of Billy's acting ability. Yeager completed a perfect song and won Best Actor Award at the Delray Beach Film Festival in 2004. Eat, digest, absorb, shit this crap, except for me. I don't buy it. Because I'm an artist. For God's sake, I'm God's last chance, the last living prophet! Billy gained 35 pounds and shaved his head for the lead role. Before he shaved his head, he filmed the part of his brother. Billy played both parts in the film. Well, you don't have an ashtray for me. You know you can't <laughs> Yeah. Right, so you go off on a thing, and I go off on a thing, and it's kind of bring it up. And you go down here, like you said. Just kind of turn your head. Get us both in. Got me looking that way. Yep. Do it again. Just stand right there. Right there. Okay. They're all in there. And that's just one note. If you're a real artist and you dedicate yourself to that, you dedicate yourself to God and being great, what's wrong with setting the bar high? Where's my song? Oh, there's no more revolution. Music used to stand for music. Rock and roll used to stand for something. It was fuck the establishment. But we sold out. We all sold out like whores. Yeager then discovered, cast, and trained all the actors himself. He had no money. A film crew literally made up of about a half a dozen 16, 17-year-olds. And that's just one note. But I at least searched for that fucking note. Because I want to feel. I believe Billy did what he set out to accomplish. He became an impeccable director on that film. It was just, it was beautiful. It was a beautiful movie. Sebastian Beach is another film of Jaeger's, a retro-style surf movie about the love of surfing. The film was an official selection of the New York City Surf Film Festival. So interested to see how a surf club from New York reacts to the film. It's going to be like the true test to what our work was and if the message really gets across. So I'm actually super nervous and really excited.
author, publisher, and editor of Surfing and Windsurf magazine, Drew Campion, had this to say about the film. It profoundly succeeds in quietly crystallizing an alternative reality in the here and now. Their language of innocent play, underpinned with a dystopian despair, a sustained dialogue between the sensual pleasures of simple existence, evokes a mood of homelessness tinged with a sweet optimism, reminiscent of the 1960s. Freedom of the mind. It first came to my attention in 2015 when the producer submitted the film that changed the world to my film festival, the Red Dirt International Film Festival, located in Stillwater, Oklahoma. That film went on to win the most inspirational film award of that season. I'm a minister here in Wichita, Kansas, and uh, just saw uh, the film that changed the world. I am still processing. It was very, very emotional. Challenged a lot of thoughts and notions, and in a lot of ways felt for me like I was encountering Jesus, encountering something very countercultural. It's an affirmation of the truth of our being, of our souls and our spirit. And it's also an invitation to confront all the things that keep us from our divinity. This is a beautiful film. Anybody who sees it, is going to be transformed in a way that gives more life. A film crew has made a stop in the Nebraska Panhandle in their quest to enlighten people living in today's fast-paced world. As the economy went south, the Yeagers decided to give up all their worldly possessions, travel, and make a movie, causing people to think outside the box. Jesus of Malibu is the wave of the future. Living out of their small RV trailer they used as a home, recording studio, and the film set where one of the characters in the film would live now that's creative imagination. What makes Jesus of Malibu even more interesting is the scientific approach the couple applied to making films, discovering field energy grids, filming on sacred geometric locations, combining metaphysics and sacred geometry to compose the musical score. We had a burning desire, a definitive purpose and determination that what we wanted was to make a unique contribution to the world for the better of humanity. They say, you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. But there's no such thing, because you'll never know truth. You can't discover it, you won't seek it, find it, teach it. The only thing is that you can become truth. The flesh longs for things, acceptance, the world's acceptance, vanities, possessions, Spirit longs for nothing. Jesus, I want you to help me. I want you to help me to change the world. I believe that Jesus of Malibu doesn't belong to us, but that it exists in the heart of the mind of every human being. As it is the desire for freedom, to be connected to the source of goodness, and to share one's talents and be blessed.